Mel, first of all, uh, thank you so much for, for giving some time. I am, of course, a huge fan. Thank you. I would say that even if I weren't, but it, but it happens <laughs> to be true. So I'm delighted to say. <laughs> uh, and congratulations <coughs> on the new movie, which, which I, I saw in the United States over the summer. Uh -huh. Enjoyed thoroughly. Thank you. Uh, and a great part for you as well. I imagine they're the sort of parts that, that when you read them, they, they just leap out of you. Absolutely. But I, I've never sort of gotten a role like this before in my life, and so it's nice to play a believable her um, villain, sort of a, a real hellraiser. She's a, she, she is a scary character, uh -huh. of course, and you do play her, I think, uh, it seems very comfortably, <laughs> which makes me worry about you <laughs> off-duty. I don't know whether there's, there's anything of you in her or of her in you. Yeah, well, it's, uh, I guess I play out my fantasies of ruling the world, which come to nothing at home, I'm afraid. But She's a, she's, she's a loving mother, I suppose, the character playing the film. Uh, and she loves a, too much. Yeah, she loves not wisely, but <laughs> too well. Um, and as a mother yourself, do you draw upon your own kind of sort of family memories to, to bring all of this to life? No, I don't think that, <laughs> but uh, my God, I hope not. Um, I have a feeling that there are certain things about what she's willing to do to advance her child's, her son's uh, career. Uh, I can make a case. I can make a very credible case for this woman. When she crosses over the line into uh, murder, it uh, gets sticky. But uh, I think that a lot of women are eager to, you know, sort of push their children forward. Certainly in America. Probably not here. Yeah, I'm sure here as well. I think <laughs> we just probably do it slightly more politely. <laughs> um, in a slightly gay way, I love the clothes that you wear in the film. <laughs> And I want to point out, I'm straight. You can like have this. any of them. I love them. They were fantastic. <laughs> it was kind of like the sort of clothes you don't see so much in movies anymore. Is that, that must be quite a fun thing, I would have thought, even a movie like this, just the chance to dress up. Well, there is a sort of a, a paradigm, I guess, for the way women in politics dress in America. It's sort of the, tr you know, the genuflection. There's two earrings, a big pin, and a necklace, almost always, and the suit. You know, preferably in a pastel color, <laughs> but um, yeah, it's something we expect our women in politics to look like. Mrs. Thatcher adhered to this uh, yeah. way of dressing, although she occasionally had scarves, I noticed. Yeah, she broke the mold occasionally. Yes. For special occasions. <laughs> uh, it's a remake, of course. Yeah. Um, and the, the original movie uh, drew heavily upon its Cold War setting. It was, yeah. Uh, is it the right time to remake a film like this, do you think? There are parallels between what's happening now and, and what was happening then? Well, I think the film is about paranoia. And um, as far as I've, I've seen, there's always time to be paranoid. And so um, this, this film is kind of a, a fast-paced remake of the original. And and because it, it, it lives in the world of 24-7 news coverage and um, it sort of has a, a faster heartbeat than the original film. It sort of moves faster and um, f for those reasons I felt like uh, I, could, I could find myself, find some funny things in this character, some hyperbolic moments. And they're there, they're there in the writing, so and that's where you look.